There are really only two ship build types that are universally effective in AX combat. Shield tanks that can slug it out with Thargoids face on using enormous reserves of shield strength and cell banks to weather the Thargoid damage output and cold orbiters that avoid damage altogether. In this video we will explain cold orbit mechanics and techniques. Cold orbiting will allow you to face even the toughest of the Thargoid interceptors and emerge victorious. I would like to stress from the outset that flying with flight assist off is hugely beneficial to this type of combat and manoeuvring. If you do not already fly FA off in combat, I would strongly suggest becoming proficient in it. Thargoid interceptors cannot effectively track a target that is cold and has a high lateral velocity. Cold orbiting exploits this using two strategies. Heat management, keeping the ship's temperature below 20% using heat sinks, thermal vent beams and silent running. And maneuvering, maintaining an orbit around the Thargoid using flight assist off and thruster control. Orbiting at a suitable velocity around the Thargoid interceptor while remaining cold will prevent the Thargoid from being able to target you correctly with its main cannon. The main cannon has a range of three kilometers. So whenever you move within the 3km sphere of space around the Thargoid, you should be employing one of the following cooling techniques. During an attacking run, you should be using heat sinks to stay cold. Heat sinks should be fired one after the other for the entire attacking run. You will quickly get used to how long heat sinks last and will be able to time the usage so you have constant heat sink cover while attacking. Gauss cannons generate a lot of heat when fired, and this can spike your temperature above 20% even under heat sink cover. You should split your Gauss cannons over two triggers if necessary and fire them sequentially as you see here. This will allow you to deliver damage to the Thargoid without taking return fire. If you fire too many gas cannons at once, you will take damage for every shot you make, as we can see here. Even with double heat sink cover, the temperature still spikes and my ship takes damage. Heat sinks are the only effective cooling tool while firing gas cannons. Do not use your thermal vent beam, it doesn't work. Arguments that it lowers your temperature slightly from gas fire are missing the point of cooling in these fights. If you are not aiming for staying below 20% heat, then you should be flying a shield tank and slugging it out. After each heart is destroyed, the Thargoid will deploy a shield that gradually decays over time. You can speed up this decaying by damaging the shield directly, allowing you more time to attack the Thargoid before the enraged timer runs out and a new swarm is created. Thermal vent beam lasers are engineered beam lasers that cool your ship while you are hitting a target. You can use thermal vents to safely orbit the Thargoid while draining away its shield. Thermal vent is an experimental engineering effect. It is recommended that you use long range as the base engineering effect so you can initiate your cooling outside of the Thargoid's 3km range. If you are using a shielded build and therefore cannot utilise silent running without losing your shields, then the thermal vent can also be used for entering and exiting as well as passing through the 3 km bubble of danger around a Thargoid interceptor. If you run a shieldless build, you have one extra evasion tool at your disposal, silent running. Silent running closes off the radiators of your ship and prevents heat from radiating away, effectively the same as being under heat sink cover to the Thargoids. It causes your internal temperature to rise quickly though, and so is only suitable for short durations. Silent running can be used when passing through the danger zone to avoid using a heat sink. I will always switch to silent running at the end of an attacking run to cover my exit from the danger zone. Firing gauss in silent running will shoot your temperature up enormously, so do not use this during attacking runs. It can however be used with gauss to burn off caustic damage effect. Just remember to have a heat sink ready to deploy immediately afterward. That covers the cooling techniques we use in AX combat, but what about manoeuvring? What do we mean by orbiting? What we see here is the idealised orbit to follow in AX combat. 
the ship is circling around in an orbit at a right angle to the Thargoid's vector. The Thargoid's vector, or direction of travel, can be determined by the trail it leaves behind. In an ideal situation, your ship should be thrusting downward at a right angle to this trail. Thruster control is essential for maintaining an orbit, and so you should have a control setup that allows easy access to all thruster axes. The main throttle is almost never used in flight assist off orbiting. Thrust vectors are as follows. Downward thrust is your main orbiting thrust. This is what you will use to keep up the orbit. Forward thrust is for closing the orbit range, used in conjunction with downward thrust while the Thargoid is attacking you, and by itself when the Thargoid turns to reload. Backward thrust widens the orbit range, putting more distance between the Thargoid and you. Lateral or side thrust is used to keep the Thargoid in a constant state of overshooting you. You should use this when needed in the opposite direction to the direction the Thargoid is moving. So if the trail is off to the left side of your screen, left would be your lateral thrust direction. So why do we orbit at a right angle to the Thargoid vector? Well, we want to maintain a lateral speed relative to the Thargoid that is high enough to avoid getting hit. We never want our movement vector to harmonize with the Thargoid's movement vector. If we orbit along a plane that intersects the Thargoid trail, our orbit will start well but as we come around, our movement vectors will align and we will start taking damage as relative to the Thargoid, our lateral movement has stalled. We call this orbit decay and by maintaining an orbit at a right angle to the Thargoid's vector, we can avoid this. The Thargoid is actively trying to manoeuvre to match its vector with your orbital plane. If it does this successfully, the result is the same. Orbit decays and we get hit. So how do we prevent this from happening? All we need to do is roll our ship to match the changes of the Thargoid vector. Keeping the Thargoid trail off to the same side of the screen and applying lateral thrust in the opposite direction to the Thargoid's direction of travel to keep the Thargoid in a constant state of overshooting. It doesn't have to be perfect and you will fall out of sync often, but as long as you make an effort to maintain this orientation and momentum, coupled with the cooling effects we covered earlier, you will avoid taking the majority of the Thargoid's fire. It's also worth remembering that when initiating the orbit, you don't need to boost or build up a high level of speed. The Thargoid is actively trying to kill you, and so will close the range itself. As you move in, simply begin thrusting down and getting round to the side of it. Then use lateral thrust in the direction the Thargoid is travelling to settle into an orbit around it. This concludes the guide to cold orbiting. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you found this guide helpful, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you.